none of us know when we will die. None of us know when we will take our last breath. We can go out tomorrow and not come back in. We can have plans for the future and never make it to that future. But there's one thing that is unchangeable. There's one thing that will test our faith and it will outlast time and to eternity. That is God's word. God's word is the test of each man's faith or lack of. For a man who reject the word of God, he's saying and he is betting his whole soul that what God has said he will not do. He has taken a stance that his word, his reason, his idea of God is more powerful than who God has revealed himself to be. Dear friend, the God of the Bible is a God of love. He's merciful. From the days when he used Moses, his servant, to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. He has been merciful from the beginning. Israel was supposed to be the nation that was supposed to evangelize the Gentile nations. But every time God tried to reveal himself to that nation, they fall away. Until when Jesus came. Jesus when he was about to be crucified. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how long have I wanted to gather you under my wings like a hen gather her chicks, but you were not willing? Dear friends, there comes a time when God says enough. There comes a time when the Spirit of God stops calling you. This is the worst state a man can be in when the Spirit of God no longer speaks to you. The voice that you once heard about spending time with God, seeking God, having faith, trusting in God, deep in your walk, open up the Bible to learn what God has said, what is He planned for my life. There comes a point when he speaks to you in your small voice and he sends people to you to speak to you and you might hear a sermon of him speaking to you and the more you reject his word the more you you shrug it off the more you say I don't really need God right now is the harder your heart will get and their friend he will turn you over to yourself. The most miserable man, the most forsaken man, is the man who God has given up on. It's not the man who has a life sentence in prison. It's not the man who has nothing and he has lost all his wealth in the world. It's the man who God's spirit no longer speaks to. He no longer gives you that nudge to seek him. Dear friend, for all of us, there is a date, there is a time that is coming when we shall stand before God. There is a date, there is a time that's coming when he will say enough. And when he does, my friend, you want to be one of those who have received, who have accepted his love, his forgiveness, his mercy, his grace, his son, Jesus Christ. If you are not one of those and you reject him all the way until 
debt do you part? You will regret it for all eternity. And you will have no one to blame. But when you're in hell and you're burning for all eternity, you will remember. Jesus told a story. Many say it was a parable. But Jesus never said it was a parable. He said there was this rich man who lived sumptuously. And there was a poor man who sat at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs off his table. When the time came, the rich man died, had a big, big, big funeral. Pretty sure all the people who were somebody attended his funeral. He was well esteemed by many. And the Bible said Lazarus also died. Lazarus, nobody ever heard what happened with his body. He probably was dumped in the heap or in the garbage outside the city. He didn't have money to, to get a big funeral. But Jesus told us what happened after, afterward. He told us that the rich man died, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And he said to Father Abraham, send Lazarus, I beg of you, to dip his finger in some water and to put on my tongue, for I'm in torment in this place. Now for him to say that, that means Lazarus was in comfort. Lazarus was in Father Abraham's bosom, a place of security, a place of covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham, and Lazarus was found in Abraham. My friend, the time will come when each one of us will die, and it will depend on who we are found in. Are we found in Christ, or are we found lacking? Are we found without? Have we rejected all the cries and the pull of the Holy Spirit of God while we were on this earth to come to him? And now we die and enter into eternity without Jesus Christ. It's a decision that we all have to make. It's a decision that many have made and they have to live with the consequence. Father Abram answered him and said, I can't do that because there's a gulf in between us that separates us. So I, even if I could have sent Lazarus to dip his finger in some water to quench your thirst, I cannot. Then the rich man says something very powerful. He said, Father Abraham, I beg of you, I have three brothers, please send Lazarus back to tell them not to come to this place, not to come to this place. Now he's concerned about his brothers that is on the earth, that he know is rejecting the will and the word of God. He said, but Father Abram, if one should come from the dead and return and tell them about this place, surely they would believe. Surely they would believe. And Father Abram said something that is very powerful. And he said, they have Moses and the prophets. And he went on to say, if they do not believe them, neither will they believe, though one should come from the dead. And dear friends, there is a Savior, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead. It has been testified by Luke, Matthew, Mark, Peter, all these servants 